Hello, and welcome to Territorial Noise. I'm your host, Dan McFarlane, and this week we have a hell of a show for you. In the spotlight is Chris Bailey's project, The Good Vibes, out of Kittery, Maine. We'll be talking with Chris in a moment, but first I'm going to play a little something to get you warmed up. This is called Losing My Mind. So to get the ball rolling, I asked Chris what the inspiration was behind creating this project, The Good Vibes. Here's what he had to say. I mean, I, I tried my best. <laughs> it was right. a school project. Uh, we had like seven months to work on this capstone thing, and I was like, dude, it would be so awesome if I could just uh, make an album here, because I'd, I'd started writing music a while ago, but I'd never, I never took a class or anything. I never really got the opportunity. So it was just super cool to be able to do that. I think I did a good job. Yeah, I think so too. Um, uh, so, what was this capstone thing like? Uh, what was that a part of? Um, for English, every year they'll have the seniors of our high school. Uh, they do this year-long um, capstone project where you've, you're given this rubric with all these competencies, and every so often you have to turn in like journals, writing down what you're doing to get it done. You're supposed to get a mentor who I didn't really contact. I just kind of said I did um, and you end up having a panel and you presentate with like a slideshow and stuff what you did you have this project done and uh, a lot of kids would do a lot of like wood shop stuff I guess I had a friend who made a surfboard I had a friend who I was building a guitar with for him right. um, and then there were some kids who would write like a couple songs I knew one kid who made like a rap beat and I was like, that's, I could do that in like a day. Like, <laughs> that's simple. I wanted to like make a whole album. Right. And I, I guess you did. Now the, um, what was it Slimy? Yeah. It was a Slimy EP. Um, yeah, you've got a little bit of everything in there. You know, you've got this definite like Pink Floyd influence. I can tell on songs like Neptune, oh. <laughs> and, uh, throughout Chromatic and, uh, 
Like I, I just absolutely love the vibe of that. And then you go and um, you had a rap song mixed in there, and then another one yeah. um, that it's like a spitting image of the White Stripes. That was um, while well, uh, losing my mind. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of Black Keys and White Stripes influence, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was Pink Floyd was like a huge influence. Even in the rap song, um, it uses two samples from Pink Floyd songs. Actually, I was listening to like a ton of prog rock when I was working on that, uh, just because like progressive rock is so like if you compare that to any other kind of rock songs, there's just such a higher level of like musical talent. You need to write that kind of music, right? I guess. So I I thought it would be a lot better for me if I was listening to that, and I love Pink Floyd, so. <laughs> Oh, me too. Huge influence. Yeah, they're definitely my top five. You know, I could go on and on and on about progressive rock, progressive metal. And th that's totally my forte. So that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's what kind of reeled me in there. Um, so th this was more than just you, I guess. It was like a group project or? Um, well, for the most part, it was just me. I, I talked to a lot of my friends at the beginning of the year because I have a lot of friends who are super musical. And there was supposed to be more than who made it on the album just due to time restraints and whether who could uh, make it to my house and record or not. But um, I was talking to my friends and I was like, yeah, like I'm going to be making music. If you guys want to come over and record stuff, like that would be awesome. And I was supposed to have um, like a jazzy sort of piece I was going to do with this kid who has like an incredible voice. He sounds like Frank Sinatra and he's younger than me. Oh, nice. And like that blew my, like I'm so, I wish I could have written something with him, but it just didn't work out. And then I have a, another friend uh, who's older than me and he went on to make up his own album and stuff. Uh, he's super talented, but I never got to work with him either. But you know, it's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess.
so like all the songs, did you actually go to a studio to record them or did you just do that out? In no, I, uh, yeah, I, what I did was I, I'm actually using the microphone I recorded with right now. Uh, I got a, is it by blue or is it by Yeti? I don't remember Yeti by blue, blue by Yeti, whatever microphone it is. It's just a USB one. You can hook up to your laptop. Oh yeah. Um, I grabbed, I took everything out of my closet, uh, put a stool in there, some sheets, I got a shoe box and put some like soundproofing foam I got from my woodshop teacher inside of the shoe box and then put the microphone in there. And that's where I recorded from. That is awesome. <laughs> it was all just super cost effective if I could get it as cheap as I could. Uh, right. It, it sounds kind of like you're a, like a rogue audio engineer. You know, you, you really had that figured out and that sounded good, too. Thank you. <laughs> like, I, I never would have guessed that you recorded that in, in like a closet. So... Yeah, and even the rap one, like I was too lazy to get my laptop out and move it over to the closet. So that one I recorded all the vocals right from my bed, which you can't really tell because there's so much going on with the instrumental that you can't hear all the extra sounds coming in. But for the other ones, like the acoustic songs, it was super important. I had to be in the closet. Uh, right, yeah, kind of get some ambience going, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know those, uh, the blue microphones, I was thinking about getting one of those. For, I, I think you just sold me because you're coming through so clear. I I love the way that sounds. So I think I might go buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. I, I absolutely go for it. They're like $120, I think, which is, you know, not bad for like a good microphone, especially one you can just hook up straight to your computer and it works fine. Like last year I went to Guitar Center and I asked, like, I have $100 right now. I'm looking to buy a microphone, record some stuff. Can you tell me which one would be the best? And they gave me, I forget what brand it was, but it just did not sound good. It came in all staticky when I was recording on like Audacity or whatever program I was using at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this year I did research by myself instead of just going in and asking. And like the, this microphone was recommended. I got it and I was super happy with it. Yeah, I think everyone that I know that's ever had one and any of the blue microphones, they've just been totally blown away by it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally recommend it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I need something. I, I was thinking about sitting down recording some songs, and I have like no way to mic my guitar amp. So, um, unless I set my computer right in front of it, and that's really that's good oh, to yeah. a point if I'm <laughs> like doing a demo. But yeah, I need something uh, better. I mean, if you listen to all the electric guitar tracks on this, except for um, the the White Stripes sounding song, that one was actually acoustic. I fix, I messed with that one quite a bit, but every other electric one, um, I just stuck this microphone right in front of my amp, and that's the quality I got. Yeah, I'd have to say that's pretty killer. So I guess I, I go ahead and ask you about your influences. Obviously, there's Pink Floyd. Um, you're talking about progressive rock. Yeah, for a lot of a few songs, they're actually in the same key. Um, there was one song I was listening to a lot over the summer. It's called like "Broad Ripple Is Burning" by Margaret and the Nuclear So and Sos. Kind of obscure, but I think it's a popular song. Okay. Um, there was just this progression I really liked in it. So it, it had to do with putting, I wish I knew more about musical terms when I say this, but, um, I just put the capo I had for my acoustic guitar on the, um, second fret and it, I played like E minor C and then this weird G chord, like where you don't put your pinky down. And, um, I really liked how that sounded. And I used those chords quite a few times, like, um, this small town used that float used that and I want to say another one did but just the same exact chords one was even in the same place I put the capo in the same spot uh, the other one I tuned down to like a C or something which sounded cool I thought but I don't know that ended up being my least favorite song on the album the small town <laughs> yeah, it was it was probably my weaker song but oh well like it happens
I don't understand why the leaves have with green valor trees. I don't understand why the moon and the stars go past these. I don't understand why we can't stay away when we sleep. And I don't understand. Why good things eventually have to leave? Maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe I'm ignorant. But every good thing goes. I can't wrap my mind. I don't understand why we don't celebrate every week. I don't understand why we come to a crash in the sea. I don't understand why people can't all live in peace. And I don't understand why good things eventually have to leave Maybe I'm stoned Maybe I'm ignorant But every good thing goes I can't wrap my mind around it There are things we don't see You don't know what's underlying Pick that flower now Because tomorrow it might be So I, I guess with you just doing this as like a school project and recording it at home, you haven't like had an opportunity or an inclination to play any shows with it. Um, actually, I have, like, I haven't really gotten the opportunity to be in any shows or anything. Like, I've barely gotten the opportunity to to do much musical things. Like, I didn't even get a class to learn how to do this. I've just taught myself all this. But um. There was one point where I played Every Good Thing Goes with one of my friends. I had her sing it because I'm not a very good vocalist. Uh, I'm <laughs> took not me a lot of tries to get it right. Um, and that was super cool. I played that in front of a bunch of kids from my school and they all really liked it, which was awesome. And then um, we were going to do a thing for the graduating seniors this year where they'd have kids perform if they had like anything, any art or music or anything. And they canceled that, which sucks. But my mentor said she might be able to get me a few gigs here and there over the summer, which would be cool. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Actually, like, take it out and uh, see how people react to it. Yeah, yeah. What was super cool about making this album, actually, was um, I never, ever, like, I kept it completely to myself that I'd been writing music. And, like, good thing I did back then because, like, I've been... Earlier today, I was listening to some old tracks I wrote, and they're not fantastic. <laughs> but, um, like... I started sharing some of my stuff on Twitter and Facebook and like chromatic, especially that was when it like people realized that I was writing stuff. Cause it became like a huge hit at my school, like on SoundCloud, it got like 200 plays or something. And this dude who was like an audio engineer or something was like, Hey, this is awesome. And like, I don't know. I was just super happy. I promoted that because now people are like noticing me. Right. Yeah. And it, that's kind of like not even really trying too much. I mean, SoundCloud is a great resource um, and I actually, I came across that too and listened to um, a couple things that weren't on a Slimy and like there were a couple demos on there and all that stuff's really good too. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to write more stuff. I've, I've been kind of on a writer's block since the album because that was like a super high pressure, like I got to get this done and now it's kind of like, what am I going to do? But I did get um, one rap beat I was working on recently that I really liked. I got that one done. So that's a start. <laughs> well, it's good that you're like continuing to write and it's not just like you did the project and, and that's it. Yeah. 
Do you think that music is something you'll stick with in the future? Or like, what are your plans? Oh, definitely. I, well, I'm going to be going to school this fall for um, robotics engineering, but they do have a bunch of music classes where I'm going. And I would love to continue writing music, even if it's just a hobby. Um, I'm hoping because my friend who's at college right now where I'm going is already in a band where they play a lot of like alternative rock or 90s rock or whatever, which I'm totally about. Like, that's awesome. And he right. said, like, he'd want me in that band. If not, like, let's start a new one. I was like, that's uh, absolutely. I will. <laughs> yeah. So I, how can you turn uh, that down? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. That, that's interesting. You're talking about going into uh, engineering when I was in high school, which it was like 10 years ago. Um, I, I did the first program. Oh, yeah? Uh, first robotics for two years. Yeah, I competed in Michigan. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I had the time of my life, and I seriously thought about going into it. I, I did like two years of engineering school. And yeah, I never got to do first in high school because I was too busy with sports, but they had um, my friend who I was just talking about was super into first, but they had VEX, which was like a smaller program that I could right. do in school. And we did super well with that. We went to California last year for the world competition, which was crazy. Oh, it's, nice. Yeah, it's just like super fun though.
if you looked at my stuff like a couple of years ago when I started writing, like it's all just like Nirvana ripoffs and stuff, just like these like angsty chords and stuff, and it's ugh, it sounded <laughs> awful. Well, I, I think honestly that's where a lot of us start at. You kind of getting your bearings musically, and I, I kind of wish that at some point I would have been classically trained, but I'm kind of glad that I'm not. I think it has a lot to do with finding out what your style is, but I, I don't even know what my style is. Like, if you looked at my album I made, I'm all over the place. I picked, like, five different genres there. <laughs> but I just I keep trying out new stuff and seeing what works for me. And I don't know, maybe at some point I'll have my own thing I'm doing, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it definitely does. But I think that what you've done so far, <clears throat> like just sort of developing yourself and experimenting, that's um, that's really a key thing to do. And, and there are a lot of artists out there, they dabble in just about everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it'll all be in one song. Like if you listen to King Crimson or something, they, they'll go from like this massive orchestral intro to acoustic and like dissonant chords and then just flat out rock in this weird time signature exchange and then close it off with the orchestra again it just it it takes you through so many different worlds and that sounds awesome i gotta yeah. check them out <laughs> uh yeah that, that's one of my top favorites guitar um robert fripp is a guitarist is one of my heroes uh, but yeah i however you end up going about it it can be good no matter what. You can really pick up on the quality of a song just by listening to it. It doesn't matter if it's off the wall and crazy. You yeah. can tell when there's passion. So I especially like the Somber Woods. I'm not sure who wrote the vocals for that, but it, it was just oh, incredible. I wrote everything, but at the very end, um, my friend Clara, who sang on that, she's a super good singer. She's super talented. Oh, yeah. Um, there was just this point where we were going through the second verses and the project was due like the next day. I was like, I don't think I can write any new lyrics. Like I'm just not inspired. We should just do it again and like mix it up a bit. So then especially in during the last chorus, there was just this one point where I was like, Clara, can you just like go off? And we had, I recorded her like three times over just going ham on the vocals. And then I uh, overlapped them over each other. So they harmonized and it sounded, I thought it sounded super awesome. And yeah. the, the weird thing about that when I was recording that is um, she didn't kind of catch where I was going with it. So when she recorded her vocals, she did it super fast. Like there wasn't space between every verse. It was just all done at once. So I had to like cut everything and like take out the breaths that are in between. And you can kind of hear that here and there. It sounds like it's kind of cut off. But it was, I don't know, that was probably the hardest one I've had to mix. But I think the ending especially came out super cool. Yeah, I think so too. You had like her main and then two overdubs and she harmonized. It was just, I love the way she pulled that off. Yeah, and that, like I wrote like the melody and whatever, the lyrics, the piano, but she, that was all her going off right there. Like she has like an incredible ear for music. She wrote two of her own songs for Capstone. She didn't, she didn't record them. Originally she was going to record them with me, but she performed them live and they were super good. They were just like um, the somber woods, but her style. Right. I, I wish I could hear those. Like, I, I know she's got some serious talent, too. And I think that's kind of why I was thinking Pink Floyd. It's like, um, oh, what was I, the great gig in the sky? You mean? Yes, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chromatic was 100 percent inspired from that song. I could definitely tell. Yeah. When you kicked in with the guitar, with the piano, just <laughs> so close to touching on it. But I could tell where it was coming from, man. And it was right on. I remember I had the piano part written. I was like, wow, this sounds exactly like Great Gig in the Sky. Oh, well. And then <laughs> I just I put the drum track over it that the, like none of the drums. A cool thing about the album is none of the drums were actually like recorded. Most of them were samples that I took from um, other drum loops I'd find. So I just take them apart, the different hi-hat and kick and just piece them together how I wanted. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember take it was just this one ride over and over and over again that I used for that song. And I, at first I was like, wow, this sounds awesome. And later I was like, Oof, not really. So I had to like mess with it quite a bit, but um, I don't know. It was a weird process doing that song. And then I was like, wow, Clara would sound great over this. So I just called her one day and I was like, dude, come over tomorrow and we're gonna record this. And she's like, okay. That was it? Yeah, that was the whole process <laughs> for that song. I made that one in like two days. 
I had like almost the whole instrumental written out in one day and then I had to record it and then I I didn't finish it obviously the second day but I had the rest of the guitar parts finished I mixed her vocals a decent amount and then I put the demo on SoundCloud I think yeah I think you've got a lot more patience than I do because I used to do that with loops and try and separate everything and make a, a new beat and I I've never been able to sit that long and, and do that. I, I just kind of get lost when I'm doing it. Like it's, it's it, a lot of people are like, oh, that's so much work, but I'm just, it's kind of fun, I think. I don't know. I can just find myself doing that all day long with different things and I'm like, maybe I should take a break. It's been like seven hours I've been staring <laughs> at the screen. See, if I have to sit and dissect a beat, I'm pulling my hair out being like, why can't this be easier? You know? <laughs> yeah, I feel that, I feel that. <laughs> Like I can program a sequencer just fine. I'm, I'm not going to try and tear apart a loop, but I, I totally <laughs> respect the fact that you can, and I wish that I was able to. I just I know that I cannot do that. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate you calling me out, emailing me. Like this is awesome. <laughs>
Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Extra special thanks to Chris Bailey, as well as Bryce Common and Claire Hannigan for lending their talents to this project. You can find more tracks from the Slimy EP and demos at the-good-vibes.bandcamp.com or at soundcloud.com slash the-good-vibes. As always, if you know someone who is interested in getting their music out there or looking to promote yourself, please feel free to contact us at Territorial Noise. Just drop the E off at the end of that. Or reach out to me directly at Antistar Runner. Also, head on over to our Facebook page and give us a like to stay in the loop, which can be found at facebook.com slash territorial noise. Keep on supporting local music, and we'll see you next week.